We can now get the paddle to start moving, and we're going to do this just a little bit differently than we did in the Pong game. So open up the object paddle, and we can use the left and right keys to move this time around, so at event, keyboard, left, and you'll remember in the Pong game we ran into a problem early on where the paddle would not completely go to the edge of the screen because GameMaker was calculating that there would be a collision and was thus preventing the paddle from moving. This time, instead of moving as soon as we hit the key, we're actually going to check and see if there's anything in the way, and then if there isn't, we will begin the movement. So the way we check for that is in Control, and in the Questions category, we have all of these conditional actions, and the one we want is this ball, Check Object. And this will see if there is an object at a certain position. The object we want is the object wall, and we are going to check at an x of negative 10 pixels, so to the left of the paddle, relative and not. So we are basically seeing if there is not an object wall 10 pixels to the left, because if there isn't, then we will begin moving. So go to our Move tab, jump to Position, set our x to negative 10 and relative. So if there is no object to our left, then we can begin moving 10 pixels to the left. If there is a wall, however, we want to move flush up against it. So come back to Control, select Else, come back to Move, and then select our Move to Contact. We want to give it a direction of 180. Remember that 180 is to the left. Maximum minus 1 against solid objects. And then to set this up for going to the right, we are just going to duplicate our event, give it the keyboard right, and we need to change our actions. So we are going to check and see if there is not an object wall x positive 10. Remember that a positive x goes to the right. If there's nothing there, then we want to jump 10 pixels on our x. Otherwise, we will move to contact in the direction 0. Remember that angle 0 is on the horizontal right. Maximum minus 1 and solid objects. Click OK and we can test this. So we move to the right and it hits. Move to the left and it hits. However, our ball is staying suspended in air here, so let's get that moving along with the paddle. We will come over and open up the object ball weight. And to get the ball to stay with the paddle, we're going to have to give it the same X coordinate as the paddle, similar to how we set up our first AI in the Pong game. So we will add an event, step, step, and then we come over to control and select the set variable action. The variable we want is the X, and we will give it the value of obj underscore paddle dot x. So every step, 30 times a second, we are going to match the object ball weight x position to the object paddle's x position. Click OK. We can quickly test this. And now the ball moves along with our paddle. This will allow us to set up and aim before the game starts. But the object ball weight is really just a placeholder. It is the object ball that is going to be bouncing around the room and destroying bricks. So we're going to have to change this object ball weight into the object ball. Let's go ahead and use the space bar to initiate that and launch the ball from the paddle. So at event, keyboard, space, and to change the ball we need to come to main one under objects we are looking for this change instance. An instance is essentially the object that is on screen. The object itself is sitting in our assets, but we can have multiple instances of that object in our game on screen. Think of the object itself as being sort of the blueprint and an instance is the actual construction of that object. So the object that we want to change into is of course the object ball and we want the perform events set to yes. 
because our object ball is going to have its own events and actions and so we definitely want them to be performed as soon as the ball shows up on screen. So hit OK, hit OK, and for one final time we can test this. And we move around and hit the space bar and we see that the ball does in fact change. But it doesn't do anything because we haven't given the object ball any events or actions yet. So in the next video we'll go ahead and do that.